the Anycubic Photon M3 Premium. Let's give it a review. Hey guys! Anycubic have been kind enough to send me their new M3 Premium to review. So let's get going. To begin with, it's an 8K. Anycubic's first, I believe. And they haven't messed around either. Whereas their M3 Max spreads its 7K across a 13-inch screen, giving us an XY resolution of 46 microns, the M3 Premium concentrates its 8K across a 10-inch screen, giving us a splendid 28.5 microns, matching its rivals the Elegoo Saturn II and the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. Yet it costs more than the Saturn, but less than the Mighty. So let's try and figure out why. It arrives in a large and fairly heavy box and unpacks to reveal a few stonking surprises. The first is the base, which is massive, probably the deepest I've seen on a mid-range printer, making the overall height surprisingly tall, which you'll notice when you lift off the new funky-shaped lid. And mid-range it is, with a build volume almost identical to that of the Saturn II. The PowerPoint, Switch and USB port almost look lost in the seemingly empty expanse that is the base's right-hand side. And the rear holds a Wi-Fi antenna. So yes, the Premium has connectivity, allowing for access to the Anycubic Cloud, which is arriving in early 2023. The display screen is nicely sized and makes use simple and clear with an easy navigation user interface very similar to that on the M3 Plus. But look at this, 50 mm Z movement and wait until you see it move. The Z upright is wide and sturdy with dual linear rails. The screw rod is double threaded to minimize lifting resistance and increase printing speed. And just watch this. That looks pretty fast to me. As for minimizing lift resistance, I'll need to run more tests before I can comment on that. The build plate feels firm and purposeful with the typical sure grip checkered pattern we've come to expect from any cubic. The thing that really stands out on the premium though is the resin tray. I guarantee you're unimpressed at your end, but in real life, it's almost big enough to bathe in. It's incredibly deep, with an increased 60% capacity. Just look at the bolts. Pouring in a whole litre of resin barely seems to wet the edges. Behind this are two air purifiers providing up to 80% odour removal, which is great. But personally, I can't help but wish that one of these had been a heater, so folks like me wouldn't have to design and build our own. Beneath this, of course, is the 10-inch monochrome 8K screen, the very reason why this base is so tall. The light array makes use of a concave mirror to improve light uniformity and the numbers certainly seem impressive. There's an upgraded cooling system to prevent cooking the UV lighting, keeping things below 65 degrees Celsius. But I personally can't help but wonder why some of this heat isn't redirected to warm the resin tray. Anyway, the plate levels using the usual paper method. Though it is pretty unnerving to watch such a big piece of metal hurtle so quickly towards a glass screen. But of course, it works fine. So let's see how it prints. I opted to use Anycubic's DLP Craftsman resin. And no, this isn't a DLP printer. But I like this resin, so leave me alone. I set about dialing in the settings using an exposure test print when I suddenly realized the USB contains a wonderfully useful doggy file, or a roof, to give it its proper name. I really wish all printers came with these. It made quick work of settings guessing, 
and this is what I settled on. The Mirror Labs Town test print certainly didn't disappoint. It was beautifully precise. So I turned to Archville and Games for something more interesting to print. And because there was still plenty of room on the plate, I opted to add the open source ring and my dead man's hand ring, just for good measure. And again, I'm impressed. Eligoo and Frozen will certainly be disappointed to hear that for me at least, the M3 Premium seems to print every bit as well as their 8K printers. So what do I think of the Anycubic Photon M3 Premium? The base does seem a little tall, and if your table is high, you'll be on tiptoes to remove the lid. And this is a fairly heavy printer, so you'll want to leave it in one location. There is a strange clunk whenever I turn mine on. And I'm really not quite sure what it is but nothing is loose and everything works perfectly. So that's about it for gripes. Other than that, it seems very well made, nice quality and reassuringly robust. It has a resin tray that will never need topping up and the double threaded screw is quicker on acceleration than many of the cars I've owned. The menu screen is clear and simple and connection to the Anycubic Cloud will give it the remote print monitoring capabilities that the Saturn II is lacking. For me, it has an overall quality that should unnerve Frozen. In short, Anycubic has been slow to enter the 8K race, but their very first entry is, for me, an absolute winner. So that's it for this one, guys. Feel free to drop me any questions as always. Take care and thanks for watching.